Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 13th of September. Boat accident kills at least 11 in central India. Activists urge Pakistan's suspension at UN for persecuting minorities. And U.S. House panel subpoenas Khalazad on failure of Afghan peace talks. And now for all the details. At least 11 people were killed after a boat capsized in a lake in India's central Bhopal city during the celebrations of a Hindu festival on Friday. Search operations were underway till the latest reports came in. At least 11 people were killed after a boat capsized in a lake in India's central Bhopal city on Friday. The accident took place when the devotees went in the lake to immerse the idol of Hindu elephant-headed god Ganesha, also called as Ganpati Visarjan, when the boat overturned and sank. The rescue teams were able to save five of the 16 people who were on board. और 16 में से 5 को रेस्क्यू किया गया और 11 की बॉडी आ गई अभी और सर्च ऑपरेशन सभी जारी है मीनवाइल मध्य प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर कमलनाथ हैज अनाउंस्ड नियरली 16000 डॉलर कंपेंसेशन टू द किन ऑफ दोस किल्ड द स्टेट डिजास्टर इमरजेंसी रिस्पांस फोर्स वाज स्टिल कैरिंग आउट अ सर्च ऑपरेशन टू लोकेट दोस मिसिंग a high-level Indian delegation met UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva and briefed her about the current situation in Jammu and Kashmir. India's concerns on the threats posed by cross-border terrorism emanating from Pakistan were also conveyed during the meeting. A high-level Indian delegation led by Ministry of Foreign Affairs Secretary East Vijay Thakur Singh met Michelle Bachelet, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights in Geneva, and briefed up about the current situation in Jammu and Kashmir and measures the centre has taken to normalise life in the region. Singh also conveyed India's concerns on the threats posed by cross-border terrorism emanating from Pakistan. Earlier this week, Bachelet had expressed deep concern over the impact of restrictions in Kashmir and asked India to ease the current lockdowns to ensure people's access to basic services. Briefed her about the, uh, Pakistan's support to terrorism and uh, the continued efforts to disturb uh, the situation in Jammu and Kashmir through terrorists. Responding to Bachelet's statement, Singh in the 42nd session of United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC on Tuesday said that recent legislative measures taken by India in Jammu and Kashmir were within the framework of its constitution. She also hit out at Pakistan's malicious campaign on the Kashmir issue and condemned state-sponsored terrorism. Indian government revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status on 5th August, evoking protests from Pakistan. Moving on, human rights activists have long condemned Pakistan for killings and enforced disappearances of minorities in Sindh. While Sindhi Congress on Thursday urged the UN Human Rights Council to suspend Islamabad's membership until all the abducted people are freed and persecution of religious minorities ends. Condemning Pakistan for killings and enforced disappearances of minorities in Sindh World Sindhi Congress on Thursday urged the UN Human Rights Council to suspend Islamabad's membership until all the abducted people are freed and persecution of religious minorities ends. During an event on the sidelines of the 42nd UNHRC session in Geneva, activists criticized Pakistan over violations of human rights of people belonging to religious and ethnic minorities, including Sindhis. So they are following multiple uh, strategies. They are abducting the political activists who are raising voice. They are coercing the minorities, forcing them to leave. 
they are taking the decisions against the historical rights of Sindhi people. They are creating social conflicts and civil conflicts in, 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 in the society. Uh, uh, our hope at the UNPO, the Unrepresented Nations and Peoples Organization, that the European Union will follow the lead of the United States and recognize that Pakistan is uh, a, a huge violator of international religious freedom standards and take action to make sure that it is no longer getting the good pat on the back that it's getting um, from the generalized system of um, preferences. According to the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances, about 5,000 cases of enforced disappearances have been registered in Pakistan since 2014. Pakistan has also been condemned internationally for discriminating against its religious minorities, which is manifested in various forms including targeted violence, abductions, mass murders and forced conversions to Islam. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi continue to suffer due to rising piles of garbage in the metropolis. They have blamed the response by the federal and provincial governments to handle the increasing trash and sewage issues has been underwhelming to say the least. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi city have expressed concerns over rising piles of garbage in the country's largest city. They blame the Sindh provincial authorities and the federal government of Pakistan for the inability to handle the increasing trash and sewage issues in Karachi. Some residents say due to lack of public awareness programs, government inertia and poor waste management, they are facing several problems. As far as the catalog, I have to go to the week. 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 We 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 have Garbage and sewage crisis are amongst the many tragedies that have afflicted Karachi, a mega city, over decades. With only two landfill sites in the city's outskirts, which are already overflowing, locals blame the attitude of authorities to pass the ball from one court to another has further worsened the situation. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. Taliban on Thursday attacked an Afghan special forces base in Afghan capital Kabul, killing at least four commandos. The latest Taliban attack comes after the group claimed responsibility for an attack near the headquarters of Afghanistan's NATO force and the U.S. embassy earlier this month. A suicide bomber targeted an Afghan special forces base in Afghanistan's capital Kabul city on Thursday, killing at least four commandos. The bomber blew up an explosives-laden minibus at the entrance to the camp in Chahar Asyab district, killing the four special forces members and wounding another three, Afghan Defense Ministry said in a statement. Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack. <laughs> The latest Taliban attack comes after the group claimed responsibility of an attack near the headquarters of Afghanistan's NATO force and the U.S. Embassy in Kabul earlier this month. The attack then killed 12 people, including one U.S. soldier. Foreign Affairs Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives on Thursday issued a subpoena to the Trump administration's special envoy, Zalmay Khalizad, over the failure of the U.S. Taliban peace talks. The subpoena demands Khalizad to appear before the committee on September 19. The U.S. House Committee on Foreign Affairs has issued a subpoena to the Trump administration's special envoy, Zalmay Khalilzad, demanding him to appear before the panel to explain the failure of the U.S. Taliban talks. Chairman of the committee, Elliot L. Angel, in a statement on Thursday said, they have not been able to get answers on the Afghanistan peace plan since four months and that now President Donald Trump has said the plan is dead. The committee has said the State Department had ignored their requests to arrange briefings with Khalilzad in February and April as well as at other times during the year. 
Khalilzad held nine rounds of talks with the Taliban in Doha and UAE in nearly one year. He has briefed the U.S. lawmakers on the talks only once. Trump earlier this month called off negotiations with the Taliban during which Khalilzad agreed in principle on a deal with the Taliban, which would allow a gradual withdrawal of American forces from Afghanistan. Indian government has launched a special market intervention price scheme to help apple farmers who have not been able to sell their produce due to the restrictions imposed on the valley post the abrogation of special status. India's Northern Jammu and Kashmir's Governor Satyapal Malik on Thursday launched a special scheme for apple procurement from the growers in Kashmir Valley. The scheme was launched to help distressed apple farmers who have not been able to sell their produce during the restrictions imposed in the valley post abrogation of the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. This special market intervention price scheme will procure 1.2 million metric tons of apple and committing almost 800 million US dollars to support the livelihood of Kashmir farmers in the process. <laughs> Kashmir produces 75% of the total apple crop in the country at 20 lakh metric tons and half of a million families depend on apple for jobs. I think that the government has taken a step from this perspective, तो इसमें मुझे लगता है फ्रूट फ्रूट ग्रोवर्स के लिए बहुत फायदा ही होगा क्योंकि ये फायदा मंद कदम है मतलब इस मौके पर ऐसा कदम उठाना मुझे लगता है बहुत अच्छा ही है बहुत अच्छा The August 5 decision of the government to revoke Jammu and Kashmir special status resulted in restrictions which also affected traders ability to tie up with wholesale buyers outside and line up with transport companies Fishing and tourism are the main occupations of residents in India's southern Rameswaram city. Fishermen who venture into the seas in search of livelihood are now exploring additional income opportunities with the conch shells left behind by mollusks that are often caught in the fishing nets. Rameswaram city is one of the important fishing centers in India's southern Tamil Nadu province. Fishing and tourism are the main occupations of the Rameswaram residents. Fishermen who venture to the seas almost every day in search of livelihood, apart from the catch, bring something else with them. Conch shells left behind by the mollusk are often caught in the fishing nets and fishermen are now exploring additional income opportunities with these conchs. Making art on the shells by painting and sculpting attracts a lot of tourists to take them as souvenirs. Abrahan the keychain paper we did in Malala tayar pandra. Ye naanga or naale ke unde or eight minera or five minera vala baapa. Or munnu or naanu ro kade ke naale ke. Ille yarnu munnu ro or naale ke kade ke. Ne yarnu munnu naale var mano ori ki drake the tourist adiye ma vanda angna pura no ve yarnu or kade ke. Conch shells are also used in India as a musical instrument, especially during religious festivals and rituals. They are also used as decorative items in general. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Boat accident kills at least 11 in central India. Activists urge Pakistan's suspension at UN for persecuting minorities. And US House panel subpoenas Khalizad on failure of Afghan peace talks. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.